So could vaccine shedding be possible? This is the question we're trying to answer in this three-part series videos. This is video number two in those three parts. The first one was dedicated to discussion whether shedding via breath is possible. And we discussed the possibility that it is possible to breathe exosomes, which is biological material released by your cells that can carry biological material such as RNA, DNA, and proteins. And in today's video, and we'll discuss the possibility of whether exosomes can be produced post mRNA vaccination or gene therapy. Recall from the last video that I was mentioning that according to the 2015 guidelines from FDA on how shedding should be measured. The mRNA vaccines that we, we've been using during this pandemic actually do fit the definition of gene therapy. Very interesting. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And then the last video will focus on what can we learn about shedding of exosomes with the spike protein from COVID-19 patients. But now let's go back to mRNA vaccines and Yes, there is one publication that has been published a year ago. This is the only one that I managed to have to find that actually showed that post Pfizer mRNA gene therapy exosomes have been found circulating in the blood of, of patients. And I covered that already in, in a video uh, a year ago. So I actually discussed this back then. And since that time, believe it or not, this has not been followed up by anyone. It has been actually disputed by some in the scientific literature. And the authors of the publications that, that were being, that were being um, attacked basically for potentially publishing um, inaccurate information, they retorted back. I will include links to this spot between the scientists. It's kind of interesting. But now I'm going to basically go back to this paper and discuss it once more time in a little bit more detail. So in that particular paper, what the authors did is they they had a, they only tested eight eight patients uh, who uh, healthy healthy individuals who actually were, were vaccinated and they they collected the blood of these individuals prior to vaccination, seven days after, two weeks after, and then also two weeks after vaccination with the second vaccine and then four months after and they measured and they looked specifically whether exosomes could be found and indeed they were able to find exosomes and what they found that exosomes actually carrying spike protein were found within two weeks post first vaccine even prior to antibodies um, being seen in the pl plasma of, of these individuals so exosomes appeared faster and they clearly showed uh, by using antibodies that these exosomes um, which are basically tiny little fragments of cells that are being released by the cells that can that can carry cellular material they had spike protein on them and you could see the staining from the antibody that uh, under electron microscopy exosomes that fit the appropriate size for what the exosomes size would be which would under 200 nanom nanometer size by the way i need to apologize in the last video i mentioned 200 micrometers i meant nanometers i apologize because i study both microclots which are in micrometer sizes and exosomes at the same time which are nanometer size so the size fit the the um, biological pattern of these exosomes fit so they knew they're dealing with exosomes and um, they clearly were carrying spike protein and they were looking at the presence of these exosomes up to four months, as I mentioned already. And indeed, they were present in the blood uh, up to four months. They peaked at the, uh, soon after the second vaccination. That led to about tenfold increase, about uh, just a bit more than tenfold increase in the amount of exosomes in, in the blood of, of these patients. And that actually coincided with the increase of both the antibodies as well circulating in the blood as well as as well as the type of t cells that uh, are like resident t cells that can help um, neutralize the the virus fast faster as well so the exact type of t cells you want to be activated as well so so much so that once the exosome level started to wane so did the antibodies 
And the authors were even speculating that perhaps what might be happening is that it's the exosomes carrying the spike protein released by the cells that have taken up the vaccine, which carried the genetic material to produce the spike protein. The, then that spike protein that was produced from the spike from that genetic material, the mRNA, would have then been released into the circulation via exosomes. And then these exosomes are then boosting your immune system. They're stimulating your, the immune system response. So the author speculated, because it's the first time this has been seen, that perhaps this is one of the ways how the immune system can be further activated, not just directly by the vaccine, but also indirectly via these exosomes carrying the spike protein. So no one has followed this up yet. As I mentioned, this was a really important study at the time, I thought, and it's it's a shame that no one has yet really looked at it uh, to look at it further. But now, what has that to do with shedding? Well, in order for shedding to take place, obviously what has to happen is one would have to breathe these exosomes. So we they clearly did not look into that, so we don't know whether that happens. That's still an unknown question. But what they did do is they look at what they did uh, is they took the exosomes from these vaccinated individuals and they immunized the mice with, with them. So they, and what they were able to show that mice responded and to those exosomes and build antibodies in response to those exosomes with the spike protein from vaccinated patients. So quite interesting. And that response, they resulted in higher antibody production than mice that were infected with the virus directly. So it was, so that was interesting. And um, what, um, what was uh, unfortunate though, is that they mm, injected the mice with those exosome subcutaneously, meaning they injected it between the skin and the muscle, as opposed to, mm, using the intranasal route, so allowing them the exosomes to be inserted into the nose of, of the mice, which would mimic more closely to breathing, right? Which is what we're trying to determine. Is it possible that shedding via of vaccine material could be possible via breathing exosomes? Now, remember in the previous video, I did mention, I did talk about that it is indeed possible to breathe exosomes and they can be captured that way and they can carry biological material. I mentioned two papers. I'll follow that up with one more publication today. The most recent I was able to find from 2021. And that, that the authors of that publication were also looking for exosomes from breath. I believe they, the way they, um, they, they it is referred to is, is exhaled breath condensate so but for the sake of simplicity i'm just gonna call it breath okay and um and what they were looking is at exosomes from healthy individuals as well as people with asthma and people with um with chronic um, obstructive um, pulmonary disease i believe so and they were able to show that Again, the, these individuals who had exosomes uh, the right size and they carried different protein amounts. But so that once again supports this. Now, third paper supports showing that you, different people under different conditions can breathe out exosomes um, that can have a different biological makeup. What was interesting in this particular paper is that they were able to show Number one, that these exosomes can also carry genetic material, and specifically these authors showed that these exosomes were carrying DNA. So I thought that was very interesting because um, I previously mentioned that exosomes can often carry microRNAs. So these are very tiny frag uh, fragments of RNA, very, very small RNA fragments. That So if you're carrying DNA, that probably would be larger size genetic material. So it's now interesting to see how much of potentially mRNA genetic material could be captured in exosomes as well, if any. So that, that just stimulated an uh, interesting question right there. But the other thing that they also showed, which I thought was very important, is that these exosomes isolated from these patients 
they were able to to be taken up by lung epithelial cells. So, and the authors, in fact, and remember, this is really recent. This is only 2021, and and we're only discovering this right now, which is why shedding via breath might still might not be um, a common suspicion among scientists as as a potential possibility. And but they were saying, hey, maybe this is a, poss a possible way of having immunological response. Now, does it? Hmm, we'll be discussing that in the next video as well. But this brings me to the final paper I wanted to discuss today, which is the fact that a vaccine has already been made against COVID-19 using exosomes derived from lung tissue, lung cells. So these authors, what they're able to do is they use lung cells to, to have exosomes produced. And the reason why they wanted lungs, lung exosomes is because when you produce exosomes from a specific cell type, well, they will mimic the architecture of, of the cell on the surface to some degree, and therefore it, such exosomes should be more bioavailable to target the, the exact same type of tissue, i.e. The, the lungs. And clearly the purpose of the authors here was to, you, to produce vaccines using exosomes that could indeed target the, the lungs and the nasal cavity so that uh, you could... Um, um, stimulate their immunological response at the site of infection uh, as well. So they were, once again, they also were able to show that these exosomes, uh, they inserted spike protein, specifically they inserted receptor binding domain of the spike protein. This is the fragment of the spike protein that is at the very tip of the spike protein. That, that element of the spike protein is used for contacting the ACE2 receptor on our human cells, which is how the virus gains entry into, into our cells. And, and um, they immunized mice and hamsters by allowing these animals to simply inhale these exosomes. So clearly breathing in exosomes that had spike protein. So the most information we can at the moment learn from the possibility of sh of shedding vaccine material is from the paper that actually produced vaccine that uses exosomes to deliver spike protein. Now these mice, what was interesting, and hamster, they produce mm, IgA antibodies. So we've discussed antibodies um, in recently, and IgA antibodies are pref preferred because such antibodies are targeted to the mucosa, which is what lines your, your nasal cavity. And it's the first area of defense when you breathe in viruses. And those are better antibodies than say IgG antibodies that you produce predominantly after the mRNA vaccination into, into the mass, muscle, which is what we've been doing uh, during this mass vaccination, because those circulate mainly in the blood. This is one of the reasons why the mRNA vaccines were actually never made to stop infection specifically, but severe symptoms. And they're one of the reasons is because you are not expected to elicit a product, same level of production of IgA antibodies in the mucosa of your, of your nasal cavity and your airway, airway lining and lungs the way you would uh, with with uh, a vaccine like these authors did using exosomes. So they were able to show that these animals post immunization with these exosomes containing spike protein fragment were producing IgA in, in significant amount, higher amount than if same same exosome vaccine was injected into, uh, into mice. What was also interesting, I thought, is that they were able to show that um, these exosomes were being taken up by antigen presenting cells. So what are these? Whenever you are being immunized, antigen presenting cells will take up either the pathogen or vaccine the, and they will present the fragments of the pathogenic, pro, um, pathogenic protein, such as spike protein, to the immune system. And that's how you start triggering the immune system. So there's different types of antigen presenting cells, all different types were able to take up these exosomes. That was B cells, that was also macrophages and dendritic cells. Don't worry about what these are and what they do, but 
basically the take home message here was that it was the dendritic cells that predominantly were the primary antigen presenting cells that were taking up these exosomes and they were able to show this with this beautiful immunofluorescence uh, staining images where you can show which type of protein is present at which site of, of the tissue and it was clearly lighting up showing with fluorescence showing that that the exosomes were were present at the same space geographical space as where the dendritic cells were so and the last very interesting element of this um, of this exosome based COVID-19 vaccine was that they also studied, the authors also studied where these exosomes were being distributed. And clearly the, mo the most were being distributed to the lung, but the exosomes traveled to many different tissues inside, inside the body. And uh, that also included liver, spleen, kidneys, and heart. And the reason why I wanted to mention this is because one of the reasons why the whole concept of shedding is, was being asked, I was being asked, and population in general has been asking, is shedding of vaccine material possible? Is because of the fact that women have been complaining about their menstrual cycle being affected after exposure to their vaccinated partners or um, family members or coworkers. And how is that possible? So now, we, could, we don't have any direct in evidence, but we now are starting to compile potential indirect evidence that could suggest that perhaps shedding could be possible if we could breathe out exosomes that carry immunological material that will stimu stimulate Im the recipient who breathes, breathes, in, breathes, breathes the exosomes in and it will have their immune system stimulated. So you can see... Uh, and if that's the case, the authors of the exosome-based vaccines were mentioning, hey, the reason why all these tissues might, might have been targeted is because once you breathe it in, it will eventually go from the lungs into the blood system uh, and be distributed throughout the body. And if so many different organs could be targeted, clearly ones that could perhaps target ovaries or, or other organs that affect hormonal balance could be affecting um, how the biological systems work. So this is what we have for now. In the next video, we'll continue discussing about these exosomes based on COVID-19 patients. And we're going to discuss the possibility, hey, can they be, can they stimulate the, the recipient's immunological system? And the big question is, well, if it's possible to breathe out vaccine-based exosomes after vaccination, is there any evidence that people around such individuals have been immunized? And I believe there is, and we'll discuss that in the next video as well. That's all I have for you today. So thanks for hanging out with me in this beautiful location. Thanks for your support. Thanks for enjoying the channel and asking all the questions. Thanks for the COVID-19 videos, sorry, COVID-19 sessions that you're uh, attaining. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next installment, in the next video. Bye, everyone.